Hello there, I'm Mike and welcome to Disney Parks Addict. Today, we'll be taking a look at all 101 of the rides, shows and attractions in all four parks at Walt Disney World for 2023. Let's kick the video off with the park that most guests first go to when visiting Walt Disney World, the Magic Kingdom Park. As you enter the park and walk under the tracks of the Walt Disney World Railroad, you will go straight into the iconic Main Street USA. There are plenty of shopping and dining locations, and of course that amazing view of the beautiful Cinderella Castle. You can meet Mickey and Minnie at the Town Square Theatre, or go on a ride in one of the Main Street vehicles that will take you on a one-way trip from the Town Square to the Central Plaza, or vice versa. And hopefully, by the time you're watching this video, the Walt Disney World Railroad should have returned to the Magic Kingdom. There have been reports that it's trying to reopen before Christmas Day 2022 after its long closure due to the construction of Tron Light Cycle Run. Fingers crossed that you can all climb aboard on your next visit to the park. As with all my attraction guides, I will be going clockwise around the park, which will take us to the next land, Adventureland. The first attraction you will come to is the Swiss Family Treehouse. This is a pleasant walkthrough attraction, giving you some great views of Adventureland. It is based on the classic 1960 Disney live action film, Swiss Family Robinson, with plenty of Easter eggs dotted around the attraction. There isn't usually any wait time to enjoy this walkthrough, so it is perfect if you are waiting for a dining reservation or a lightning lane pass in the nearby area. Next up is the Jungle Cruise. This is the classic boat ride that takes you through different jungles from all around the world as you encounter all the nature, audio animatronics, and of course, the backside of water. It's famous for the funny jokes and puns that the Jungle Cruise skippers use throughout the tour, which adds another amazing element to this fantastic boat ride. If you love this attraction, then you should check out the nearby restaurant, Skipper Canteen, that features lots of Easter eggs from the amazing Jungle Cruise and the Society of Explorers and Adventurers. The next attraction is the Magic Carpets of Aladdin. This is a spinning ride which gives you the chance to fly on a magic carpet as you take in the scenes around the beautiful Adventureland. Younger guests will love taking a flight on this fun attraction. Beside the Magic Carpets of Aladdin, we come to our first show, Walt Disney's Enchanted Tiki Room. This was an opening day attraction and still delights guests today with the amazing audio animatronic birds, flowers, and totem poles singing the beloved soundtrack. Even if you're not a fan of the show, it's a great attraction to take a rest and enjoy the cool atmosphere. The final ride in Adventureland is another classic Disney attraction, the Pirates of the Caribbean. This dark boat ride takes you on a journey through many different scenes featuring treasure, skeletons, pirates as they take over a town, and of course Captain Jack Sparrow makes an appearance. Many changes and additions have been made over the years, but it still holds up today as it did when it first opened in 1973, and is a must-ride attraction in the Magic Kingdom. Another plus, due to the high-low capacity, it never usually has a long wait time so can be enjoyed without having to use a genie plus lightning lane pass it's time to move on to the next area frontierland this can be accessed by either continuing on from the pirates of the caribbean or through a small opening close to the magic carpets of aladdin First up is the amazing Splash Mountain. This great log flume ride takes you on an exciting journey with Br'er Rabbit as he leaves home for an adventure whilst being pursued by the despicable Br'er Fox and Br'er Bear. At over 10 minutes, this is one of the longest attractions in Magic Kingdom and is a great way to cool down on a hot day. Be sure to ride Splash Mountain before it closes for its upcoming re-theme. Next door is another one of the three mountain rides, the Big Thunder Mountain Railroad. This mine train roller coaster really doesn't disappoint. The theming is fantastic and takes you on an exciting journey through the abandoned mines of Tumbleweed. You'll encounter dips and turns, dinosaur bones, hear the cranking of the lift hill and bell whistles, and have a very enjoyable ride. This is a classic Disney coaster that all the family can enjoy. Next up is Tom Sawyer Island. This attraction is only accessible by rafts, which takes you to the island containing lots of references to characters from the 1876 Mark Twain novel, The Adventures of Tom Sawyer. There are plenty of interactive, climbing and scenic opportunities in its caves, forts and other exciting landmarks. This is a nice change of pace from the rest of the park and the perfect place to relax. 
We end Frontierland with the popular show, The Country Bear Jamboree. This is an awesome little show featuring amazing audio animatronic bears singing tongue-in-cheek country songs. You rarely have to wait for a showing, so I thoroughly recommend watching this if you haven't before. Now let's move on to the smallest land of the park, Liberty Square, starting with the Hall of Presidents. This attraction is a multimedia presentation and stage show featuring audio animatronic figures of all 46 individual United States presidents. Joe Biden was added in 2021 with a special recorded speech completed by himself, which shows a great level of detail. Come and enjoy a slice of classic American history. Next up is one of my favorite Disney attractions, the Haunted Mansion. This offers great theming, a fun storyline, and awesome special effects. It has one of the greatest ride pre-shows in the infamous stretching room, before you head on to the Omnimover ride system that takes you through many different scenes within the Haunted Mansion. Stick around until the end of the video to see an exciting addition coming to the Haunted Mansion very soon. The final attraction in this land is the Liberty Square Riverboat, where you can cruise around the rivers of America on board the beautiful Liberty Bell as you take in the sights of Frontierland, Tom Sawyer Island, and Liberty Square. It's a nice little 20 minute relaxing ride, so it's perfect for taking a break in between some of the more intense attractions in the park. We now go from the smallest land to the largest. Let's take a look at the amazing attractions in Fantasyland. The first attraction you will come to is It's a Small World. This is a dark boat ride and another Disney classic that is featured in five of the six Disney resorts around the world. It includes over 300 audio animatronic dolls in traditional costumes from cultures around the world and the catchy theme song that will get stuck in your head for days. Opposite It's a Small World is Peter Pan's Flight, the amazing dark ride that takes you through some memorable scenes from the classic Disney animation, on board your own flying ship. The queue line is filled with loads of interactive elements which adds to this already amazing attraction. This ride can get busy, so either get here early or book a lightning lane through Genie Plus. Before we head to the next attraction, if you do have any questions about the Magic Kingdom or the Walt Disney World Resort, don't hesitate to leave a comment and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. In the center of Fantasyland is the Prince Charming Regal Carousel. This is actually an authentic carousel that was built in 1917 and was purchased by Disney in 1967 and fully refurbished especially for the Magic Kingdom. All the horses are unique and I suggest riding this attraction at night to enjoy all the amazing lit up scenery around Fantasyland while listening to an organ based soundtrack of Disney classics. Next is the 3D show Mickey's Philhar Magic. This is a great show filled with classic Disney characters and a fun storyline. Join Donald Duck as he goes through scenes from some classic Disney animations including Fantasia, The Lion King and more, as well as some newly added scenes from a fan favorite Pixar's Coco. On the other side of the carousel, you can meet your favorite Disney princesses at the Princess Fairytale Hall. Guests of all ages can meet the likes of Cinderella, Tiana, Rapunzel, and more. Next up is the Seven Dwarfs Mine Train. This is a steel-based family coaster that includes some amazing audio animatronics and nice little storyline elements, like the diamond mine with all the dwarfs and the appearance of the witch arriving to give Snow White the poison apple. This is a nice little coaster for all the family to enjoy. Now onto another great dark ride, The Many Adventures of Winnie the Pooh. Join Pooh Bear and the gang as you ride through many different scenes featuring all your favorite characters, including bouncing with Tigger and a Heffalump dream sequence. This is another popular ride which can get long lines, so make sure you book a lightning lane pass for this one. Next is the spinning teacup ride, Mad Tea Party. Based on the unbirthday party scene in Walt Disney's Alice in Wonderland, you can enjoy this nice classic Disney attraction. And don't forget to look out for the hidden Dormouse that appears throughout the ride. In 2012, a new area of Fantasyland was added that is themed to some of the classic Disney princesses. It includes Beast Castle and two dining locations based on Beauty and the Beast, as well as the Little Mermaid section that includes the attraction Under the Sea Journey of the Little Mermaid. This is an Omnimover dark ride that takes you under the sea, where you'll experience an adventure with all your favorite characters and songs. And finally, we move to the final section in Fantasyland, the Storybook Circus. First up is the Barnstormer featuring the great Goofini. This is a junior coaster featuring Goofy as a famous stuntman, the great Goofini. It's a nice little coaster and a great way to introduce younger guests to thrilling rides. 
the classic spinning attraction Dumbo the Flying Elephant was also relocated to Storybook Circus, as well as expanding to a two-ride system. It also includes an indoor interactive play area where you will be given a ticket-themed pager while you wait to ride the attraction. It's one of those classic Disney attractions that people of all ages still love to ride. You can also meet Donald, Daisy, Goofy and Pluto at Pete's Silly Slideshow. And younger guests will love playing at the special wet play area, Casey Jr. Splash and Soak Station. It's now time to move on to the final land in Magic Kingdom, the amazing Tomorrowland. You will first come to the Tomorrowland Speedway, where you can drive your very own miniature gas-powered car around an enclosed track. You will be able to see parts of Storybook Circus and Tomorrowland along this amazing course. This is perfect for younger guests that want to experience driving a real car for the first time. Next is the rocket spinner attraction, Astro Orbiter. This takes center stage in Tomorrowland and is one of the only attractions that can be found at all six Disney resorts from around the world. It is also a great way to get some amazing views of Tomorrowland. Beneath the Astro Orbiter is the entrance for our next attraction, the Tomorrowland Transit Authority People Mover. This is a 10 minute elevated train ride that gives you some awesome views of the park. Along the ride, you will see plenty of incredible dioramas, including the original Walt Disney model of Epcot, as well as the inside of some of the attractions in Tomorrowland, like Space Mountain and Buzz Lightyear Space Ranger Spin. This ride can often be overlooked as it usually doesn't have a long wait time, but it is definitely a hidden gem for Disney Park fans. Stick around until the end of the video for a sneak peek at Tron Light Cycle Run that will be opening in Tomorrowland very soon. Until that opens, Space Mountain still reigns supreme in Tomorrowland. This is of course the classic indoor roller coaster that was actually the original Space Mountain attraction, beating Disneyland's version by two years in 1975. It has a great atmospheric queue line which will get you in the mood to travel to space. It features two tracks that actually mirror each other and most of the ride is in almost pitch darkness so you can never tell which way the ride car will be going, so it's a very exciting experience. Right next door to Space Mountain is Walt Disney's Carousel of Progress. Originally designed for the 1964 World's Fair, it was added to Magic Kingdom in 1975 after a short run at Disneyland. To say that this is a classic Walt Disney attraction would be an understatement. Set in a rotating theater, it shows you the development of technology throughout the years with the use of a family of amazing audio animatronics that are still as impressive today as they were 58 years ago. Make sure you check out this amazing show. Next, we have Buzz Lightyear's Space Ranger Spin, the shooting dark ride that lets you compete with your family and friends to get the highest score as you help Buzz Lightyear take on the evil Emperor Zerg. This is another popular attraction and is enjoyable for guests of all ages. Our final attraction in Tomorrowland is the Monsters Inc. Laugh Floor. This is a fun show that uses audience interaction to create some family friendly laughs. The show utilizes digital puppetry technology which uses live actors behind a large digital screen while computer rendered monsters appear with the actors voices. This means that each show is very unique and will have all the family in stitches. There is plenty of live entertainment and nighttime spectaculars that can be found throughout the park, starting with Mickey's Magical Friendship Fair, a stage show in front of Cinderella's Castle featuring a host of lovable Disney characters and classic songs from films such as Tangled, Frozen and Princess and the Frog. Next up is the Disney Adventure Friends Cavalcade, which is like a miniature parade. This has lots of characters including Miguel from Coco, Mirabelle from Encanto and lots more. It follows the regular parade route starting in Frontierland, passing through Liberty Square before heading down Main Street USA, so there is plenty of space to catch this great show. Currently there is another cavalcade, Mickey's Celebration Cavalcade, which celebrates Walt Disney World's 50th anniversary and features Mickey and friends in their special celebration outfits. This should run until the end of the anniversary in March 2023. Next up is the Disney Festival of Fantasy Parade that features seven amazing floats celebrating all things Fantasyland. Look out for Peter Pan, Sleeping Beauty, Tangled, plus a host of princesses and of course Mickey and Friends. With an original soundtrack and other amazing special effects, you won't want to miss this one. Finally, we have Disney Enchantment, the nighttime spectacular that was also added for the 50th anniversary. This show features dazzling fireworks, beloved Disney music, 
music and immersive projection effects that extend from the Cinderella Castle all the way down Main Street, USA. Expect to see and hear all your favourite Disney characters and songs in this amazing show that is the perfect way to wrap up your spectacular day at the Magic Kingdom Park. So that wraps up all the current attractions in Magic Kingdom. Let's move on to the second park to open at Walt Disney World in 1982, Epcot. The park is currently going through a major transformation with some elements completed while others are still under construction. One of the completed projects is the entrance to the park. Gone are the Leave a Legacy stones and in its place are beautiful pathways filled with lots of trees and flowers and the return of the amazing entrance fountain that was originally delighting guests on opening day. You will enter into World Celebration, the first of the four lands within the park. The first attraction you will come to is also the park's icon, Spaceship Earth. This dark ride tells the history of communication with a focus on the development of cultures and the future of technologies and features many different scenes and animatronics. As it is close to the entrance, wait times can be quite high in the morning, so it is best to ride this attraction in the mid-afternoon or evening. The rest of World Celebration can be found further into the park that includes the new dining options, Connections Cafe and Eatery, a new shopping location at the Creation Shop and the return of Club Cool, where guests can sample different Coca-Cola products from around the world. The next attraction in World Celebration is Journey into Imagination with Figment. This dark ride has gone through many changes over the years but currently takes you on a journey about the five senses with the mischievous Figment. It features the fan favourite song One Little Spark written by the Disney legends the Sherman Brothers and is a great fun attraction for all the family. Next door is the Disney and Pixar Short Film Festival, a 3D show that includes three popular animated shorts. It's a nice place to relax and cool off while watching some awesome short films before heading on to some other exciting attractions. It's time to move on to the next area, World Nature, which is based on the beautiful things we can find in the natural world. First, we head into the Land Pavilion that houses three attractions, as well as a few dining locations. Living with the Land is a boat attraction that takes guests through a few show scenes with audio animatronics before entering a real working greenhouse. This is a great attraction as it usually has low wait times and is an enjoyable educational 20 minute ride. It showcases a variety of different modern farming methods with lots on display. It's fun to look out for the many hidden mickeys featured throughout the greenhouses and it's great to know that all the fruit, vegetables and fish that are farmed here are used in the restaurants around the Walt Disney World Resort. The main attraction in the Land Pavilion is Soarin' Around the World, which is a hand glider simulator that flies over various locations from our beautiful Earth. This was added to the park in 2005 due to the popularity of the original attraction in Disney's California Adventure, which featured beautiful scenes from around California. There is now an international version where you can see some amazing sights from all over the globe. The final attraction in the Land Pavilion is Awesome Planet, an eye-opening 4D film about the Earth's biomes and the perils of climate change. This is a great place to learn about how we can help our awesome planet together. This is another great place to relax and cool down while also learning something new. The other pavilion in World Nature is the Seas with Nemo and Friends. This is an Omnimover ride featuring Nemo and Friends in a real aquarium. It uses an innovative glass effect to project the animated characters into a real aquarium, which is perfect for the younger guests and fans of the Finding Nemo films. The exit of this ride takes you straight into another attraction, the Sea Base. This is a full working aquarium where you can find sharks, stingrays, manatees, dolphins and a whole plethora of different aquatic life. Another attraction based in the same pavilion is Turtle Talk with Crush, an interactive show starring Crush the Sea Turtle who is also from the Finding Nemo franchise. It is a really popular show with the younger guests and it consists of an improvisational real-time conversation with the audience. It uses special digital puppetry that allows the animated characters to interact with guests which makes it a totally unique experience every time. On the other side of this first section of the park is World Discovery that has a futuristic design with attractions based on technological advancements. Mission Space is a centrifuge-based ride that simulates the training required to be a member of the space program. 
This is a great attraction for any fans of space and thrills. Before the mission, each rider is given a specific role to perform throughout the attraction, which gives great rewritability. Guests are exposed to up to 2.5G, so if you get motion sickness easily, this might not be the ride for you. Luckily, they did include the green mission in 2006, which includes no spinning and just some small movements, which is perfect for guests that want to experience the attraction without any of the spinning motions. You can also further your intergalactic experience by dining in the new Space 220 restaurant that will take guests in a special space elevator to dine in a space station. Next up is the newest attraction in the park, Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind. This is an amazing indoor roller coaster that is the first ever Marvel Universe attraction at Walt Disney World and the first coaster in Epcot. Join the Guardians of the Galaxy in this space adventure that includes a backwards launch, venturing to the Big Bang, and a rotating selection of six popping musical tracks. The final attraction in World Discovery is Test Track, a high-speed giant slot car ride. It still remains the fastest Disney attraction at 64.9 miles an hour. Guests can design their own vehicles before going through various indoor and outdoor tests to see how the cars perform. It's a very exciting and fun ride for all the family to enjoy, and one not to miss. We now move on to the final area of Epcot, but also the largest. World Showcase is made up of 11 different countries, which all feature a selection of shopping and dining locations showcasing the country's culture and uniqueness. Some of the countries have rides, starting with Mexico's attraction, Grand Fiesta Tour, starring the Three Caballeros. Join Panchito, Jose, and of course Donald Duck on this fun dark boat ride with its amazing setting within the interior of the Mexican Pavilion. It displays various aspects of Mexican culture before passing by the restaurant and a musical performance by the Three Caballeros. This ride could easily be missed, so make sure you head to the back of the Mexico Pavilion to experience this great attraction. Heading clockwise around World Showcase, next to Mexico is the Norway Pavilion, which houses another dark boat ride, Frozen Ever After. Join Elsa, Anna and the gang through various exciting scenes from the movie, which also features some amazing audio animatronics and popular songs for you to sing along to. Due to its popularity, this attraction can get very long wait times, so make sure you either head here early or book a lightning lane pass through Genie Plus. Next up is the China Pavilion, which is home to the show Reflection of China. This is in a Circle Vision 360 degree theatre showcasing the beauty and rapid growth of this amazing country. Wherever you stand, you can get a great view of this short film. There was a previous announcement of a new film, Wondrous China, that will replace Reflections of China, but there is currently no set date of when this will happen. You will need to pass the beautiful Germany and Italy pavilions before you get to the next attraction called the American Adventure in the Host Pavilion. This is a stage show that takes guests on a trip through American history with the use of 35 audio animatronics including Benjamin Franklin, Mark Twain and many other amazing American legends. It is a great show and I encourage everyone to watch this amazing 29 minute show showcasing classic American history. As you stroll past the stunning Japan and Morocco pavilions, you will make it to the France Pavilion, which is home to three attractions. Impressions to France is an 18-minute panoramic movie which visits many of France's cities and historical sites. There is a reason why this film hasn't changed or been updated since the opening day of Epcot, and it holds the world record for longest-running daily screening of a film in the same theatre. I'm sure you and other guests may be persuaded to visit France after watching this delightful movie. Set in the same theatre, Beauty and the Beast Sing Along is currently playing alternately with the previous show. Get ready to sing along with Belle and other characters with all the popular songs from the beloved animated classic. It also features an original storyline from a new perspective to the fan favourite animation. In 2021, a new attraction was added to the France Pavilion, Remy's Ratatouille Adventure. Already a fan favourite at the Disneyland Paris Resort, this exciting dark ride shrinks you down to experience life in the kitchen as a rat alongside Remy and friends. This attraction also opened up alongside an expansion of the France Pavilion, which includes new dining options as well as other exciting additions. You will pass through the United Kingdom before coming to the final pavilion, Canada, and the final attraction in the World Showcase 
showcase Canada far and wide. This is another short film set in a Circle Vision 360 degree theatre. The show features lots of beautiful scenery from all over Canada and a narration by Canadian icons Catherine O'Hara and Eugene Levy. The final attraction in this guide comes in the form of nighttime entertainment. It is of course a spectacular show Harmonious. This replaced the long running Illuminations Reflections of Earth in 2021. The show celebrates how Disney music inspires people around the world, featuring massive floating set pieces, custom built LED panels, choreographed moving fountains, lights, pyrotechnics and lasers. This is the perfect way to end your day at the amazing Epcot. Each evening, you can also enjoy the new lighting effects that have been added to Spaceship Earth called Beacons of Magic, especially for the Walt Disney World 50th anniversary. It runs every 15 minutes and has proved very popular, so will most likely be here to stay. That is all the attractions that are currently open in Epcot, and let us know if you are enjoying the video by hitting the like button. Okay, let's head to the third park in this guide, Disney's Hollywood Studios. You'll be transported to the glitz and glamour of Tinseltown as you walk into the first land, Hollywood Boulevard. This is where you can find the main merchandise store and the park's Starbucks location. At the end of the boulevard, you will come to the Chinese Theater and the newest attraction in the park, Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway, which of course replaced the popular Great Movie Ride. This attraction is a dark ride that features Mickey, Minnie and Goofy in the new animation style, which has quickly become a fan favourite and is a worthy replacement to its predecessor. To the left of Hollywood Boulevard is the next land, Echo Lake. First off, we have Indiana Jones Epic Stunt Spectacular. This show features a live action movie stunt performance reenacting scenes from the first Indiana Jones movie, Raiders of the Lost Ark. Still as popular as ever, this show has been running for over 30 years and it continues to be as exciting and enjoyable as its premiere show. It has the classic opening scene with a rolling boulder and also includes some audience participation which gives the chance for guests to become part of the show. It's one of my favourite shows at Walt Disney World and is a must watch every time I visit Hollywood Studios. Another popular show in Echo Lake is, for the first time in forever, a Frozen sing-along celebration. Younger guests will enjoy joining Anna and Elsa in this original show, showcasing all the characters and popular songs from the hit movie. Even if you're a casual fan of Frozen, you will love this show. And sticking with the Frozen theme, you can also meet Olaf at the Celebrity Spotlight, located opposite the Backlot Express restaurant. Just next door, you can catch a showing of Vacation Fun, an original animated short with Mickey and Minnie, which has the same animation style as Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway. The final attraction in Echo Lake is Star Tours. This is the classic 3D motion simulator ride based on Star Wars that has gone to be added to many of the other Disney parks around the world. It has continuously been updated since 2011 to Star Tours The Adventure Continues, which added a variety of scenes from all three trilogies. With these new scenes, there is a total of 384 different combinations, giving each ride a completely unique experience, and gives the guests the chance for a lot of rewritability. Carrying on clockwise around the park, you will come to the next area, Grand Avenue. Here you will find one attraction, the brilliant show Muppet Vision 3D. Directed by the legendary Jim Henson, this great show is perfect for all the family. Expect funny gags, 3D effects, and of course plenty of your favourite Muppet characters. In Grand Avenue, you can also grab a pizza from Pizza Rizzo or a classic Italian meal at Mama Melrose's Ristorante Italiano. You can find out more information about all the dining locations at Hollywood Studios in my restaurant guide video. It's now time to move on to the newest area in the park, Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. This is still the busiest section in Hollywood Studios and I would suggest heading here first for a chance to ride the amazing Rise of the Resistance. If you like Star Wars and dark rides, then this is probably the perfect attraction for you. Walt Disney Imagineering went all out when designing this attraction, which features a trackless dark ride, a walkthrough section, a motion simulator, audio animatronics, huge practical sets, and an amazing storyline. All of this results in one of the greatest Disney attractions ever created. Although it had a rocky opening with many closures and a tricky reservation system, it is much easier for everyone to enjoy this great attraction. The other attraction in Galaxy's Edge is the exciting Millennium Falcon Smuggler's Run. 
This is a motion simulator ride, giving six riders a chance to be a pilot, gunner or engineer as you go on an interactive smuggling mission. It's great fun and gives great rewritability, trying out the different roles as well as attempting to beat your previous scores. With lots of shopping and dining locations within Galaxy's Edge, there is plenty of things for you to explore like building your very own lightsaber or droid, meeting characters roaming the land, and even playing the fun datapad game through the Play Disney Parks app that interacts with different elements throughout the land. We now move on to the second newest area in the park, Toy Story Land. It opened in 2018 and is comprised of three attractions. First up is the family friendly roller coaster, Slinky Dog Dash. It has amazing theming with all the recognizable characters from the Toy Story franchise. This great attraction can also be enjoyed at night with all the colorful lights seen throughout the land. I think it would be a great first or second coaster for younger guests that want to start trying out more thrill attractions. The next ride in Toy Story Land is Alien Swirling Saucers, a spinning attraction similar to Mater's Junkyard Jamboree at Disney's California Adventure. For a simple flat ride, this is a great attraction for all the family. The way it whips around the corners gives the illusion of traveling a lot faster than you actually are, and with a pumping soundtrack and amazing theming, this is another great addition to the park. Finally, we have Toy Story Mania that actually predates the land by 10 years, but was redesigned to be included in Toy Story Land. It's an interactive 3D shooting gallery featuring characters from the Toy Story franchise. It has great interactivity, rewritability, and is genuinely enjoyable for adults and kids alike. Similar to Star Wars Galaxy's Edge, Toy Story Land can get very busy throughout the day, so I would suggest making use of extra magic hours if you're staying in a Disney hotel or utilizing the Genie Plus app to help reduce your wait times. Next, we move on to the Animation Courtyard, which doesn't feature any rides, but still has plenty of things to do. First is Walt Disney Presents. This is a walkthrough mini museum exploring the life and legacy of Walt Disney through photos, models, and rare artifacts. At the end of the walkthrough, you can choose to watch a short biographical film, One Man's Dream, which is a must for any Disney fan. The end of the exhibit is constantly changing, so it's always worth checking out, plus you may get to see a sneak peek of an upcoming Disney movie. Next, a show perfect for younger guests, Disney Junior Play and Dance. This is a live performance featuring many of the popular characters from Disney Junior, like Vampirina, Doc McStuffins, Timon, and of course Mickey. For fans of Disney Junior, this is a great chance to sing and dance along with their favorite characters. Near the entrance of the theater, you will also be able to meet your favorite Disney Junior characters throughout the day. The final attraction in the animation courtyard is Star Wars Launch Bay. This is an interactive walkthrough attraction featuring Star Wars character meet and greets, film memorabilia, games, and of course a gift shop. There is also a small theater showing a short documentary that goes behind the scenes of the production of Star Wars, which makes it perfect for all fans of the sci-fi franchise. We now move on to the final area of the park, Sunset Boulevard. An attraction that you can't miss is the Twilight Zone Tower of Terror. This amazing drop ride has all the characteristics of a great Disney park attraction. An awesome storyline, incredible theming, an atmospheric queue line and pre-show, and just a great thrilling experience overall. This is the perfect attraction for all the family to enjoy and your best chance to get a memorable ride photo that can fit in all of your party. So why don't you ride this elevator that travels directly to the Twilight Zone. Next is Walt Disney World's first and only inverted roller coaster, Rock and Roller Coaster starring Aerosmith. This is an indoor coaster that has three inversions and a high speed launch. You get to meet Aerosmith in the pre-show as well as hearing a few of their hit songs while riding the attraction. This is a perfect ride for all the thrill seekers and rock and roll fans so make sure you have a go the next time you're in Disney's Hollywood Studios. Beside Rock and Roller Coaster is Lightning McQueen's Racing Academy. This great little show features Lightning McQueen and other characters from the popular Pixar franchise. It includes an impressive audio animatronic of Lightning McQueen as he teaches racing rookies lessons that he has learned whilst being the racing champ. Younger guests and fans of the Cars franchise will love this attraction. Next up is another show, Beauty and the Beast Live on Stage. 
This stage show is an abridged version of the movie that features all the characters and songs from the classic animated film. It has recently had an update to some of the costumes and choreography, which has helped to make it feel fresh and continue to be one of the best shows at Walt Disney World. The final attraction is Hollywood Studios' nighttime spectacular, Fantasmic. This is an amazing show filled with fireworks, characters, pyrotechnics, and water effects. Compared to the nighttime shows at the other parks, I think this presents something a little unique and is a very enjoyable show. It is the perfect way to wrap up a great day at Hollywood Studios, and it has just recently added some new characters and scenes, which has made it even better. So that wraps up all the attractions in Disney's Hollywood Studios, before we take a look at Animal Kingdom, if you're looking to book your next Disney holiday, then why not check out Undercover Tourist? They offer great ticket and Disney hotel deals for Walt Disney World and Disneyland. So why not have a glance at my affiliate link in the description box below. It's now time to move on to the fourth and final park at Walt Disney World, Disney's Animal Kingdom. Once you pass through the amazing entrance and ticket booth, you will need to roam through tropical garden pathways which make up the first land in the park, the oasis. This area is filled with beautiful settings and also includes some animal exhibits. As you make your way through, you will come to the next land in the park, Discovery Island, which is home to the amazing park icon, the Tree of Life. This beautiful handmade tree features over 300 different animal carvings, and you can take the Discovery Island trails to see all the intricate details up close. This land is the main hub of the park, with plenty of shopping and dining locations, as well as walkways to all the other lands. Under the Tree of Life is the wonderful 3D show, It's Tough to Be a Bug. Based on the underrated and often forgotten A Bug's Life, this fun show features plenty of creepy crawlies and some great practical effects. You will become one of the bugs in the theater designed as an underground insect paradise, and with all the educational aspects within the show, all the family can learn how it's tough to be a bug. On Discovery Island, you can also meet Mickey and Minnie at the Adventurer's Outpost, near the walkway leading to Asia. Younger guests can also become wilderness explorers by completing challenges and earning badges as you work your way around the park in this fun interactive adventure. You just need to grab a handbook located at stations throughout the park. As with all my guides, I will work around the park clockwise, which takes us to the newest land in the park, Pandora the World of Avatar. Although fans were unsure about the inclusion of this land when it first opened in 2017, doubts instantly disappeared once guests began experiencing this spectacular and immersive land. All the theming is fantastic, from the Na'vi interactive features and alien looking plants, but it's the floating mountains that take centre stage, and it is truly a jaw dropping moment when first experienced. There are currently two attractions in Pandora, starting with Na'vi River Journey. This dark boat ride takes you through the forests of Pandora, showcasing the native animals and bioluminescent flora. It's a pleasant ride and features the best and most expensive audio animatronic that Disney Imagineers have ever created, the Shaman of Songs. This is a great ride for all the family to enjoy. The other attraction is Avatar Flight of Passage. This is a 3D flying simulator which allows guests to take flight on a native mountain banshee and soar across the landscape of Pandora. The wait time can get very high throughout the day, but luckily the queue line and pre-shows are part of what makes this attraction so good. The ride uses some of the best technology that creates breathtaking visuals and is an enjoyable experience overall. I would highly suggest making this your first attraction of the day. Pandora has been a great success and is an amazing addition to the park. And don't forget to check it out at night as it transforms into a bioluminescent wonderland. You'll also be able to find a lot of the guests' favorite counter service restaurant, the Satuli Canteen, which you can find out more in my restaurant guide for Disney's Animal Kingdom. You can either return through Discovery Island or head along the Discovery River to the next land, Africa. You'll be entering Harambe, a brilliantly themed market town filled with the hustle and bustle of restaurants and shops as well as a few rides and shows. The major attraction is Kilimanjaro Safaris, where guests can take an expedition to see lots of different African wildlife in the savannah, rivers and rocky hills. The area of this attraction is actually bigger than the whole of the Magic Kingdom and you get to see hippos, rhinos, giraffes and of course lions. 
to view the most animal activity, I would suggest riding this attraction during sunrise or sunset. As there is so much to see, you can actually ride this safari multiple times and still find something new to see. This is such an amazing and huge attraction that you won't want to miss. Next up is the wonderful show Festival of the Lion King. Set in a round theatre and featuring a variety of puppetry, acrobats, fire and aerial dancing, as well as all the popular songs from the original Lion King movie. This is a show not to be missed. You can't help but sing along, they even have an audience participation segment which allows the younger guests to join in and become part of the show. It's definitely one of the best shows at any of the Disney parks and is a crowd favourite. So make sure you arrive early and catch a showing. Another amazing thing about Disney's Animal Kingdom are of course the animals appearing throughout the park. Africa has a cool walking trail called Gorilla's Falls Exploration Trail. It features some of the animals from Kilimanjaro safaris as well as gorillas and other amazing species. It also includes an aviary showcasing a variety of colourful exotic birds. It's a nice way to relax and take in some nature away from some of the louder areas in the park. Although this next attraction's entrance is within the Africa land, I consider it to be a standalone area, as you need to take some special transportation to get there. It is of course Rafiki's Planet Watch. To get there, you have to hop on the Wildlife Express train, which allows you to see a bit of the behind the scenes of the Animal Kingdom backlot, including some of the animal holding buildings. Rafiki's Planet Watch focuses on Disney's work with animal conservation and protection of different endangered species. At the conservation station, you can find some of these rare animals on display, as well as a veterinary examination room, which allows you to watch and communicate with some of the staff working with the animals. You can meet and pet some of the animals at the affection section that features goats and other domesticated animals. There is also an animation experience where a Disney animator teaches you how to draw a popular Disney character and you'll learn how live animals can help to inspire your drawings. Overall, this area is a nice change of pace from the rest of the park and allows guests to learn something new about the animals within Disney's Animal Kingdom. It's time to take a look at the next area in the park, the beautiful Asia. Again, the theming is nothing short of spectacular and it really does feel like you're entering into another world. One thing you won't be able to miss is the mountain that is visible from most of the park, which contains the roller coaster Expedition Everest Legend of the Forbidden Mountain. You enter into an amazingly themed queue area, transporting you into Nepalese equipment rooms, tea gardens and a Yeti museum. The roller coaster features a switch track, allowing the train to travel backwards for a portion of the ride, as well as being home to one of the largest and most complex audio animatronic of a Yeti. This is one of my all-time favourite Disney attractions, and is definitely one not to be missed. The other major attraction in Asia is the Kali River Rapids. Similar to other attractions in the park, this rapids ride continues the message of conservation and environmental protection and deals with illegal logging and habitat destruction. It's a nice way to cool down on a hot day and a fun ride for all the family. Asia also includes another walking trail called the Maharaja Jungle Trek, featuring animals originating from Asian countries. The highlight of this trail are the tigers and the amazing theming throughout the attraction. All the enclosures look natural to the animal's habitat and at no point does it feel like the animals are caged in or has limited space. If you enjoy looking at animals, then this is the perfect attraction for you. The final attraction in Asia comes in the form of a show, Feathered Friends in Flight. This is a fun and informative stage show featuring a variety of exotic birds from around the world. The trainers do a wonderful job of showcasing these amazing feathered creatures as they perform some fun and exciting tricks. We now move into the final area in the park, Dinoland USA. The first attraction you will come to is Finding Nemo, The Big Blue and Beyond, a stage show housed in the theatre in the wild. This is a reimagined version from the original Finding Nemo musical that closed in 2020. It showcases Nemo's story with the use of puppetry, animated backdrops and live music, making a great show that all guests can enjoy. 
Next up is Chester and Hester's Dinorama, set to the theme of a parking lot dinosaur carnival. You will have a chance to win some prizes at a selection of classic Midway amusements at Fossil Fun Games, and ride Triceratops Spin, a spinning attraction that flies guests up high on the back of a friendly dinosaur. Younger guests will love the Boneyard, where they can explore and have fun at the Dinosaur Dig Site Playground. If you dine at the nearby Restaurantosaurus, all kids meals come with a bucket and spade, which is perfect for them to use in the Boneyard. The final attraction in this guide is the excellent Dark Ride Dinosaur. This has all the characteristics of a perfect attraction, great theming, a fun storyline and an overall enjoyable ride. You travel back in time to the late Crustaceous period and are given a secret task to bring back one of the dinosaurs. Of course you encounter many different dinosaurs as well as a meteor shower which makes the ride particularly dark but is definitely an extremely exciting experience and one not to miss. So that wraps up all of the attractions at Walt Disney World in 2023. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you would like to help support the channel, then consider subscribing or check out my new Patreon page for early access to videos starting from just $2 a month. I have also just released some new merch, which you can take a look at in the link below. And if you want to see a guide for all the attractions coming to Walt Disney World in 2023 and beyond, then check out this video here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time on Disney Park. Addict.